everybody, Tony from Shooting Star SVG back and today I'm going to go through how to create a wood engraved mock-up with Photoshop. Somebody was looking for help in one of the Facebook groups so I thought I would go through this really quickly and hopefully it will help some of you. You can play around with some of the settings to kind of get something that you like. This works for me, it may not work for you. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment in the comments box below and we'll just go from there. With that being said, I'm gonna head over to my computer screen and we'll get started. This is the mock-up that the particular individual sent me. So I'm just gonna go through it with what he sent because I figure, well, that'll just be easy to do. All right, so first thing that you're going to do is just create a rectangle where you want your item placed, okay? You're going to right click and click on convert to smart object. Then you will double click that, remove your fill, remove your strike, and then you're just going to drop your design on there. Get that placed where you like it, and then hit control S to save. Now when you go back, you can see that. So I'm just gonna label this as top, and then I'm gonna right click and duplicate the layer, and I'm gonna list that one as bottom. For the bottom layer, you're gonna have opacity set to 100% and fill set to zero. For the top layer, we'll have the opacity set to 30% and the fill set to zero. For the top layer, you're gonna double click to get your blending options open. Go to bevel and emboss. You're going to make sure that your style is inner bevel. Your technique is smooth. You want a depth of 100. Direction is down. Size of 15. Soften of 12. Angle of 45. Make sure use global light is unchecked. And an altitude of zero. Your first highlight mode is going to be color dodge white with an opacity of 45. Your shadow mode is going to be multiply black with an opacity of zero. Okay. So that is that for the top layer. You don't need anything else other than that. Okay. So you can see very, very faintly that this is starting to take shape. Now we're going to go ahead to the bottom layer. Again, double click on the layer. First, we're going to go to bevel and emboss. For this one, we're going to select emboss. Our technique will be smooth. We're going to have a depth of 50%. Direction will be down. We'll have a size of 10 pixels and we will have a soften of 10. Your angle is gonna be 45. Your altitude is going to be 20. Your highlight mode is going to be linear dodge add white, 0%. Your shadow mode will be linear burn, black, 40%, okay? You can see that back there starting to take shape. Now we're gonna go to inner shadow. We're gonna add that. So for the first inner shadow, you're going to want to select linear burn, black, you want your opacity to be set to 24%. Your angle is going to be 34. You want your distance to be 25, your choke to be zero, and your size to be 45. You're going to create a another inner shadow. The blend mode for this inner shadow is going to be normal. You wanna make sure your color is set to white. You have an opacity of 10%, an angle of negative 120, Distance is 20 pixels, size is 30 pixels. You're going to add another <laughs> inner shadow. This time you'll be utilizing the overlay. You're gonna wanna make sure that this is a dark gray color, an opacity of 80%, 47 on the angle, 45 for distance, and 50 for size. And you can really see this starting to take shape now in the background. So kind of crazy. Next step is a color overlay. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is black, okay? You want your blend mode to be on multiply and you want to make sure that you have an opacity of 20%. Then you're going to want to add in an outer glow. You want that set to color dodge, 20% opacity, white. Your technique will be softer. 
you'll have a spread of zero, a size of 10, a range of 50, and make sure you increase that jitter to 60%. And last but not least for the settings, we're gonna go ahead and add in a drop shadow. You wanna make sure that's set to white, color jodge, opacity of 10%, angle at 45, a distance of four pixels and a size of 10. And then you can go ahead and click on OK. And you can see how this is shaped up. You don't really need to do much else to this to, you know, have it have that engraved look, in my personal opinion. Um, it looks really, really good. Normally what I'll do is duplicate the top layer here and change that to design and then remove the effects. And then you just wanna go ahead and bring the opacity up and you can bring the fill up. That's gonna give you your actual design and then you can go through and see if you want to add in um, the actual color. So sometimes I'll do a soft light on this. You can see the difference and just mess around with the opacity to kind of add a little bit more depth to it. And you can mess around with the fill as well. So you can go ahead and play around with those two settings just to see, because again, if you take it off, there is a little bit of a difference. It's not super mega, but you know, it's enough, it's enough. Just to go through everything one more time, you will create a rectangle and generate a smart object. Drop your design into the smart object. You will have two layers. For the first layer, you will have a layer effect of inner bevel, smooth, with a depth of 100%, down direction, size of 15, soften of 12, angle of 45 degrees with global light, no altitude. White color dodge at 45%, Black multiply at 0%. That is all for one, okay? For two, you're going to have your emboss under your bevel and emboss, smooth, 50% depth, direction down, size 10, soften 10, angle of 45, altitude of 20, linear dodge add white, 0% opacity, linear burn black, 40% opacity. You're gonna have three separate inner shadows, okay? Linear burn black, opacity 24, angle of 90, 25 for distance, 45 for size. Normal white, 10% opacity, negative 120 angle, distance of 20, size of 30. A third inner shadow of a darkish gray, whatever you prefer. Blend mode overlay, opacity 80%, an angle of 47, distance of 45, size of 50. Then you will have your color overlay and multiply at an opacity of 20%. An outer glow with a color dodge, opacity 20%, 0% noise. Technique softer for the elements with a 10, per 10 pixel size and make sure you increase that jitter to 60%. You'll also have a drop shadow with color dodge that is also white, 10% opacity, 45 degree angle, four pixel distance, 10 pixel size, and then you are good to go. You can go ahead and group those, and then again, copy that first layer, remove the effects, and then add in the blend mode to that particular layer to make sure you get the effect you want. To me, this looks pretty well engraved something that I do when I'm creating mockups for the web. So that's that for the design tutorial. I went ahead and gone through those settings again. If this is something that you do fairly frequently, you can actually create something called an action in Photoshop, going through each one of these steps for the layers. And then what that will do is it will go ahead and execute that particular, those particular settings for you. So it does save a little bit of time if you create an action. Um, I personally don't. I don't do the wood engravings enough for me to create an action, but it definitely is something that you can utilize. Hopefully this helped. It is not perfect. Obviously it is a digital mock-up, but customers understand when you are creating engraved items, not every piece of wood is gonna be the same. And therefore 
Each engraving is going to be different depending on so many different factors that we have in our workshops. So if you have any questions, drop a comment in the comments box below. If there's something that you'd like to see, let me know. I will make it happen and I will catch you all on the next video. Shooting Star SVG, signing out. Mm -hmm.